one way or the other. My guest is Margaret Ann Futrell, who is a member of the Chickasaw County Board of Supervisor. It's Miss Supervisor and also Russell Brooks, member of the Chickasaw County Board of Supervisors. I got sued two soups here, and I'm doing pretty good. Good morning, guys. How are you? Good, good morning. morning. Good morning. Thank you. All right, let's start this off. We do have a, we, you were certainly welcome. We have a story on, a lot of people are interested in this, and it's just new technology. It's fascinating to us. Kind of reminds me as an old farm guy, a farm boy, when we first started doing catfish farming, and this is kind of new. Uh, so uh, it, it's okay. solar farming to a point. Uh, let me ask you, let me ask both of you just to jump in here. The new story is, it's posted on our website over $230 million is being invested into a solar panel farm in Chickasaw County. Uh, Board of Supervisors recently announced the Florida-based Next Era Energy will be bringing uh, a, a big plant there. And uh, let me just ask Margaret, first of all, tell me a little bit about this. Uh, let me talk about Next Era. Uh, it's, mm -hmm. it's an American-owned company. Its main office is in Florida. It's in 38 states and in Canada. And over time, it's invested more than $85 billion in the energy uh, infrastructure. It's a leading clean energy company, and it's a good company. It's a real good company. And they're going to, it's got a, our farm is going to have about 1,600 acres, and we're so excited because, you know, of the benefits to our county. Let me let me ask you, Russell. Russell, when you start talking about this, break it down for us. Sixteen to seventeen hundred acres. How many of these solar panels are we talking about on that one? Because it's it's yeah, it, that's going to be quite a bit. Seventeen hundred acres is a pretty large. Yeah, you, you're uh, talking plot of probably land. thousands of panels out there. You're talking about probably that's a amazing. thousand panels or more out there. They'll be bringing energy directly from the sun. They they rotate along with the sun as the sun moves. Those panels so, kind of move to. To, to make sure that they maximize their energy productions off of the sun. So it's, it's going to be a fascinating... One of the, uh, uh, yeah. One of the negative things about it is it, it's not job intensive. The construction is, but once you get it up, uh, you have to have... Uh, how many people are we talking about that's going to maintain these things as far as employment in well, the area? Yes. Uh, well, the way it is, we, we know that it's not going to be sustainable jobs, but during the construction phase, it's going to create anywhere mm -hmm. from two to 300 jobs. Yes. And uh, those jobs will last for approximately about maybe two to three years during the construction phase. And once it's, once it's um, constructed, then those jobs will become a minimum. But uh, it in offering those two or three hundred jobs for the three years, that will help our economy in the area yeah. as far as our job market. Um, but the main the main uh, features of it is the tax money that it's going to bring back to the county. Um, the first ten years, which we had to go through the state legislature to to get some bills passed where we could give them the tax breaks for the first 10 years because they're going to invest over 200, approximately $250 million. And by doing that, they was able to get some of the same tax breaks that a, a company that's coming in yeah. investing that money. But, and we'll get about maybe, I would say, pretty close to anywhere between 300 and to 400,000 to be uh, divided two ways between the Oklahoma Municipal Separate School District and the county. But now after the first 10 years have passed for the next 20 years, we will get over $2 million a year at the minimum. So that will put a lot of money back into our tax base will give us some of that much needed revenue so that yeah. we can do other projects within our county. And because have of you guys seen the have, solar farms are so much better than they used to be? Yeah. Well, and so. that's that's but, even if you look uh, four or five years ago, they they've just improved every single year. As a matter of fact, during the first five or ten years, I, they probably have to come in and replace some of the uh, the ones that they've got originally on here. So that that might be another avenue for yeah. uh, for employment. Yeah. I, I do want to ask uh, you this. I'll, I'll, go ahead. Uh, real quick, have you, either of you seen the map of where this energy is going to be used? It will go to TVA. TVA is 
you know, I mean, yes. they're the ones that are responsible. Oh, I got you. So it goes yes. into the TVA system. Okay. Yes. yes, it goes back into their grid. And, and that's one of the uh, things that was in, uh, that really had a significant play in us receiving this solar farm because it's mm -hmm. going to be already close to a, a substation, electrical substation. And it also had the, um, the, the wiring running down the center of it with the transformer wires. And that helped out a lot. That played into it. Instead of it just being an isolated land out in the middle of nowhere, it's close to a substation, and then it has the transmission lines going down the center of it where it can be pumped right into a TVA system. And they would disperse the energy throughout the area. What Was this originally farmland? Was it cotton or soybeans or something like that? Now it's solar panels? Soybeans. So it means, is it still privately yeah. owned, or are they leasing the land, or do they buy the land? No, well, that's another advantage. The landowner will receive money, you know. So it it's a win for us, I mean, just for our county because of the revenue more than anything. Yes. Yes, each landowner receives, he, he'll receive more per acre than he would on his beans, put it like that. Wow. That's pretty, pretty, that's pretty good. And the, and the, um, and the John Deere cost is a lot less on that to maintain it, so I can understand where they're coming from. The only problem now is you're going to worry about hailstorms a lot more than you used to after this thing is completed. Did you see the picture of uh, one of these solo farms out there that had a, a terrible hailstorm? And I think it wiped out the entire thing. New concern. Well, okay. well if, uh, I would worry a lot more if I didn't, if next that era I didn't have insurance and uh, you know it's such a good company it's no, true i'm not too concerned with that um, yes i'm quite sure they're going to investing that much money they would be kind of mm -hmm. out of the ordinary for them not to have insurance on it and if that would happen then those 200 jobs may come back into play restructuring it anybody say anything about uh, the possibility of this containing not lowering but just keeping it at the same as far as the uh, energy costs for the people in your county in Chickasaw County. They didn't say anything about that. But, you know, looking at everyday life, we use electricity a lot more than they did even 20 years ago. You just look at the schools. Every mm -hmm. kid almost has a computer. You know, used to, we had pencil and paper. So, I mean, electricity is, it's in higher demand. That's why they're going to different sources. You don't have any windmills in and around the area, do you? No windmills, just solar farms. Is there an area there for you? To, well, I'm sorry? Uh, uh, now, when we did the legislation, when we did the legislation so that we could bring uh, green energy into Mississippi, uh, Tunica was on board because Tunica, uh, there's a company that wants to be a windmills in Tunica. And the legislature, legislatures, they gave uh, us these tax breaks so that we could be more um, more uh, competitive with other states and other areas to get mm -hmm. some of these green energy companies to come. And uh, there is a windmill company looking at Tunica, Mississippi, as we speak. Yeah, I know. I think some of those are already up and running uh, in that area, but uh, it's going to yeah, be interesting. Yeah. It's it's a new world out there, and uh, this was not the first solar farm. There's others, like the one uh, somebody's mentioning on Six Bar Text Line in, in the Canton area, and, yeah. and I think there's several now, others. And this one's going to be a big one. First, yeah. we, were, we were the first county in northeast Mississippi to have solar farms. Northeast. We currently have two already on a smaller scale. They are about 30 to 40 acres apiece. But this one here is a 1,600 acre, so we, we, we expanded a little bit. So yeah. we were the first in Northeast Mississippi to have solar farms, and they started back in the early, I would say around 2013. Yeah. Talking with Margaret and Futrell, and also uh, Russell Brooks, both are members of the Chickasaw County Board of Supervisors with uh, big, big news for Chickasaw County. 16, 1,700 acre panel farm. The Will that be the biggest in the state? I'm I'm thinking it will be the only one that will be somewhere close to that size is one down in uh, Sunflower County, 
mm -hmm. do have one, uh, a, a pretty good size one in Sunflower County. But if I'm not mistaken, this one would be larger than that one. I got you. Those panels, from what I understand, I was just Googling some stuff up here, last 25 or 30 years as far as inch uh, independent panel. But you said they're motorized, so they track the, the sun directly to maximize the, uh, the, the intake of the heat and the rays. So any idea? How much does one of these things cost? you have any idea? Just one panel? Uh, per panel, I don't know, but if you, you I don't know exactly, but they're going to be very expensive when you're talking about $240 <laughs> million. <laughs> oh, absolutely. I mean, I, I, it's, it's, that's got to be, uh, that's got to be quite of an expense there. And uh, they got to put, they got to make sure that uh, they maximize too, as far as the, the sun rays are concerned. Well, that was, yes. that was in one, one final doable. question here. Yeah, go ahead. I feel that they will be doable. I feel they will be doable also because they got to, you know, and looking at, at where they're going to be out in the weather. And I'm feeling mm -hmm. that uh, I'm probably thinking they're going to make them very doable so that they can withstand so much uh, rain pressure or, or hail pressure. You know, they should be made out of some durable yeah. uh, fibers. Yes. You, you don't think that you don't think that the the gentleman who owns that land will let us go rabbit hunting on there anymore, right? <laughs> no, that's over there. <laughs> I'm just, I was just saying, just asking. <laughs> we could cook yeah. something there if we killed it. But one more question, yeah. seriously yeah, I, though, I, is I, there I, is there a room for expanding there? Should they want to add more? Uh, we have more land available. Do you, Margaret? Your final yeah. thoughts on this? Solar farm is changing. I say in the future they're going to have it where they're built up, where you could have sheep under it. You could even uh, plant crops under it. They're they're making a lot of improvements and innovations with the mm -hmm. solar farms. I expect that so to be in the future. For, and that's the, that's the problem or that's the negative PR that most of them get. They're taking that land out of operation. If they could do that, that would certainly solve uh, a lot of the situation on dual use of, uh, of that farmland. Guys, I thank you so very much. Congratulations on that, and keep us informed. Thank you. Will thank do. You. You